These are the most recent release scale trains, 5188 cubic foot covered hoppers. These are Gunderson hoppers. Several different releases in this second run. We've got Union Pacific here with the Auto Lock 2 outlets. We've got IO Interstate. A few KCS variables in both operator and rivet counter. And then you've got BNSF and GATX. So we'll take a closer look at these and see what you get in the box. What is different? What's the same on the second run next? All right, I'm going to start by unboxing Iowa Interstate, which is a new scheme on this second run. You get a little paperwork in the box here. And you have history and information on the back of the box in case you're curious about that. I have already reviewed these once, so we'll see what we skip. I'm not exactly sure yet, but you do have a manual that talks about the hopper and a parts diagram that goes into all the different parts. This is a very large parts diagram, kind of two pages tall, so lots to go under there. And you got the model itself, which is probably what you want to see. Now, this is taped usually. I've had these out of the box. You may have seen that I did a running trains video. The bunch of unit trains run by. A lot of these hoppers were in that video. So be sure to check that out if you haven't. But this is what you get in the box after you get the soft plastic and the hard plastic shell off. You get these little guys which are roller, roller bearing caps for the wheels because they have moving rolling roller bearing caps. Okay, Iowa Interstate. Got a coupler cut lever on the side here, running down to the coupler, which is a Skeltrain's metal coupler. Air hose with silver tipped end, metal wheels. Crossover platform is etched metal. Got nice ladder detail. Everything looks straight and applied well. Iowa Interstate and the car road number is on the side along with some small print that is legible for load limits and such on the end of this car. We've got this little lever here that actuates the gates or helps facilitate the opening and closing of the gates I should say. Etched metal platform up top with separately applied grab iron there. The platform is different than what you've seen in past products, not from scale trains, but from some other manufacturers, because this platform and these support beams here are all one piece, and they push into the body where these pre-drilled holes are. That's already done for you. And, you know, when you pull it out of the box, you saw it pull out of the box there. So uh, it, it is done, but it helps keep things from getting bendy as that metal contracts and expands with different temperatures. Iowa Interstate on the side is nicely done. You can read it. Nice little badge there. FRA mandated reflective safety markings on the side. Warnings everywhere. As we look at the top, we'll see the hatch detail. The hatch latches there and the etched metal walkway we just talked about. On the bottom, you'll see the actual gates. You'll see the shaker brackets, I think they're called. They help they have an attachment that helps shake the car to free up the load. On to the other end, brake wheel. More of what we talked about before. You used to have some air lines, air reservoir there. Ladder rungs. And then you have this plating. It's like a additional protective plating that's added to some of the car body. So pretty cool overall. Nothing I can see so far changed from the first run. I believe just different schemes at this point.
speaking of different schemes, you've got GATX in this run. More of the same detail, just giving you a quick Vanna White here. Reflective safety striping. The FRA mandated striping is in a different location. It's ran along the bottom. So those are some road name specific details that they've changed in the printing along with obviously the logos, the markings, the road number, the warning colors, placement, etc. So there's GATX. Really popular scheme, BNSF. I've now got a small unit train out of these. Same thing applies with all the other cars I talked about with different markings. You do have some, even in the second run, BNSF that have the stiffening, the side bars that kind of stiffen the car body, keep it from wrinkling. That was in early production. Then you've got a few variations of KCS including this Southern Bell KCS here. This is the second time these have ran, so I made a very long KCS train for you in the run by at the end of the video. Got a little bit of layout dust on there. In debris. Here's another variation of KCS. As you can see, some differences. These are the... KCS had moved away from the Southern Bell scheme, so they have these lighter colored hoppers. Some of them have KCS patch, which you'll see in the run by. But I think it's on the other end of this layout already set up in this unit train, but lots of different KCS variations, operator and rivet counter. Now we talked a lot about rivet counter and operator differences in my last video so I won't repeat myself too much there basically what you have is on the operator you're gonna have less details obviously you're gonna have a plastic walkway versus that's metal plastic couplers versus metal couplers you won't have as much body detail either but you're also gonna have a significant price difference which the prices should have flashed upon your screen by now so that kind of gives you a quick rundown of the difference between operator and rivet counter. Rivet counter being the more detailed line. Needed something to contrast so I could show you coupler height. There's one end. Seems almost dead on. Maybe angled a little downward. Check the other end. Just picked a random hopper. When you have 67 hoppers like I have in this case, you can notice some QA trends. That one is low. So, you're going to have a mix of coupler height. Another thing we'll check is body wobble. This one seems pretty rigid. There were a couple that needed tightened bolsters, but understandable when shipping. You don't want to lock tight the screws that go onto the trucks, so you have a chance for screws to back out slightly in shipping. Free rolling. There are no problems with this piece of rolling stock dragging like some of the other pieces of rolling stock I've seen from other manufacturers at times where they needed to be truck tuned this one is absolutely free rolling check the wheel sets here they are engaged from what I can see so wheel sets don't seem to be a problem on this run Check the weight of these cars, you have 4.4 ounces, 120 grams, 0 0.120 kilograms. It's a little over a quarter of a pound. It looks like it had adjusted down slightly to 4.3 ounces, so 4.3 ounces total. All right, for length, it looks like the car body itself is about seven and a half inches long. Coupler to coupler extends that out to about eight and a quarter. So that is about the length of the car. From what I understand, I gotta redo the math off camera. 
these might be a little light. I had about 10% of my cars have some sort of derailing issue, but my track is not perfect. And uh, although the other cars tracked fine, a few of the cars didn't track well um, at switches and around certain curves in certain areas. So I'm not sure. I'm not ready to blame that on scale trains because my track work is not perfect. I will be perfecting my track work on my next layout. But overall, I think this is a good product. It is a little light, 10 MRA standards, but everything else is engaged except for coupler height, so I guess the wheel sets are really what's engaged. Um, but good detail on the car. Uh, minimal waviness on the etched metal walkways on all 67 cars. I only found one that just had to be kind of stuck back in. Everything seems to be good there. So overall, solid product, but those are the pros and cons of the products. I'm going to leave you with a very long run by of a lot of these hoppers. So I hope you enjoy that. If you didn't get to see my running trains video that was just put on, it was a unit train edition. You'll be able to see these again in action on this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.